Hello friends, I am Dr. Prashant Sharma and you are watching Medico's Hub. In this video on real system under the heading ultrafiltration, I am going to discuss the regulation of GFR. It is important to note that those factors that regulate the renal blood flow or RBF are actually the same that regulate the GFR. Hello friends, I am Dr. Prashant Sharma and you are watching Medico's Hub. In this video on renal system, I am going to discuss the regulation of RBF that is renal blood flow. Now, first one is neural factors that regulate the RBF. Conditions like exercise, cold, anesthesia, pain, and hemorrhage. These conditions stimulate the renal sympathetic fibers and when such fibers are stimulated, vasoconstriction occurs and this vasoconstriction will result in decrease in RBF. Another important thing is that the activation of renal sympathetic fibers stimulate the renin angiotensin system which result in formation of angiotensin 2 which further result in vasoconstriction resulting in further decrease in RBF. But important thing is that the activation of sympathetic fibers, renal sympathetic fibers also promote the synthesis of prostaglandin E2 and prostaglandin I2. Even angiotensin 2 also promote the synthesis of these prostaglandins. These result in vasodilatation and finally resulting in increase in RBF. So on one side RBF is decreasing, on another side RBF is increasing. Final outcome is that there is no significant change in RBF. So until and unless the sympathetic stimulation is prolonged and very intense, there is no significant effect on RBF. And if such stimulation continues for a long time of it is prolonged, then renal shutdown may also occur. So this is the effect of neural factors. Now second is hormonal factors. We will divide the hormonal factors into two categories. Those causing vasoconstrictor, vasoconstriction and those causing vasodilations. So here vasodilators. We should know that vasoconstrictor will decrease the RBF and vasodilator will increase the RBF. Now here is the list of vasoconstrictors. Thromboxane A2, then endothelin, epinephrine, then norepinephrine, then adenosine, these are A1 receptors, then ADH, Here, histamine, dopamine, kinin, prostaglandin E2 and I2, 
then endothelin derived relaxing factor then adenosine that is a2 receptor then ACH that is acetylcholine and atrial natriuretic factor here A2 can also be added that is angiotensin 2 so these are the hormonal factors the third factor is local factors which are produced as metabolites for example adenosine it is vasoconstrictor and will result in decrease in rvf then co2 and prostaglandins like pg e2 and pg i2 these will cause vasodilation and will result in increase in rbf thereafter there is also another factor which is very important that is auto regulation now we'll discuss the auto regulation now the auto regulation which is the fourth factor there are two mechanisms under this heading first is myogenic regulation of rbf and another is tubular glomerular feedback now how these work it has been observed that if we draw a graph here this is mean arterial pressure in millimeter of mercury this is 80 this is 180 millimeter of mercury and here rbf is there then it has been observed that with increase in map rbf also increases but between 80 to 180 millimeter of mercury rbf remains constant this is what we say by myogenic regulation how this myogenic regulation of rbf occur when RBF increases, then blood pressure also increases. The wall of afferent arteriole is stretch because of which some cation channels open. This result in depolarization and finally the voltage gated calcium channels on a smooth muscle open these smooth muscles are found in afferent arteriole and because of this vasoconstriction occurs in afferent arteriole because of which RBF finally decreases. Now there is another mechanism that is tubuloglomerular feedback. How it works? It has been observed that again we are taking MAP that is mean arterial pressure in millimeter mercury this is 80, this is 180 and here it is GFR 100, 200, 300 
this GFR is in ML per minute. This is GFR in ML per minute. Now it has been observed that with increase in mean arterial pressure, the GFR also increases, but it remains constant between 80 and 180 millimeter of mercury. Now what is the mechanism behind when the mean arterial pressure increases, then GFR also increases and amount of fluid in tubules also increase and increase in NACL is sensed by the macula densa. Macula densa is found in nephric tubules. And it gives a feedback to the glomerulus. This is known as the feedback from tubule to glomerulus. That's why it is tubulo glomerular feedback. And this result in vasoconstriction in afferent arteriole because of which RBF decreases and as a result of this the GFR also decreases. So this is about regulation of renal blood flow. Hit the like button, share and subscribe our channel to get the latest updates and notifications.